Welcome back to the Texas Truck Channel. I'm Brian and we are coming to you today from the Texas Motor Speedway here in Fort Worth, Texas. And man, we are covering a bunch of stuff at a media event here with the Texas Auto Riders. Be sure to subscribe because we're going to have a lot more there both before and after this video goes live. But today, right now, we're shooting a vehicle we've been chasing for a while to get on the show, a 2022 Nissan Pathfinder. This one's in platinum trim, which is, means it's just loaded to the hilt with everything. This one's covered in, I'm not joking, the color is gray over black two-tone. That's the name of it. It's kind of that cement gray, space gray. Really like it. A lot of pearl, looks really good. I'll tell you right now, I've had a ton of neighbors and coworkers say, that looks awesome. And is that the new Pathfinder? And it looks smaller to some people. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Here to tell you that's not right, but I think there is also an optics of the black roof with the gray paint being low. People associate height with size all the time, and that's just not true. This interior is massive. So, talking about the exterior a little bit, we do have a new face, we have a new butt, we have new hips, it's all fresh. And we have 20 inch wheels on this one. I'll tell you that is a bit questionable in the ride department. We'll talk about that when we get moving in this in a second. But we do have LED headlights up front. We do have 360 cameras and we do have the traditional Pathfinder spelled out on the rear. Really happy with that. With all that covered, I think it's time to investigate the interior and then we'll jump into driving this puppy and telling you what it's all about. The exterior is beautiful and so is the interior. So let's dive into that a little bit. We get a, the nice chestnut leather in the platinum model here. And I think it looks great with the contrasting black and the contrasting silver bronze accents on the sides next to the HVAC. Center display, we get the all digital and you get some interesting dials that you can switch in between. Those are really neat. I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of the one you switch to, but you can get traditional, just analog looking digital dials that look cool as well. You do get the heads up display, which works great. The best part about the heads up display in this particular model is there's a button to turn it on and off. You can just turn it on and off. You don't have to go through a bunch of menu screens to get that. I love that. Steering wheel feels great in your hands, has great flappy paddles. So when you're in sport mode, you can pretend like you are doing something, even though you're really not. Center stack, you get a beautiful, bright, crisp display. It's not the best house infotainment from Nissan, but that's okay because it has CarPlay and it's wireless and it works flawlessly and works every time. So just switch that and just use it. Piano black throughout the center, moving on down to a very unique shifter that's square, that isn't rotary, which I like because it differentiates from the HVAC, drive control modes, stereo knobs, it's different. You know you're doing something different when you use that. Moving on back, you get a nice center, center second row. You get a center console that is movable, so if you need to get access to the third, that helps a lot, and it's pretty easy to pull out. Uh, nice panoramic roof, so the second row occupants get that. You're not stuck in coach, you're in business class, so there's, that, that's helpful. Auto up, auto down mirrors, memory seats. Most importantly, you get the crotch chillers, and that's what we need. Now, with all that out of the way, let's see how this translates to the on-road experience with the powertrain and move on to that. Ah yes, the on-track performance. We have a track and a vehicle that needs testing and unfortunately our in-car cameras have failed us. This footage is lost in the ether forever and we apologize for that. So I'm gonna sit here and cover the dynamics of the vehicle because I remember it, it's been recent and let's just get into it. This is a three-row crossover. Do not expect, expect a Nissan Z here. It's just not gonna happen. The good news is, the 3.5 liter VQ V6 does sound just like a 350Z, and we love it for that. You don't hear this augmented pumped in sound, it just sounds really cool. Now, in the world of four cylinder turbos, we love this. It's also paired with a nine speed automatic, not a CVT. Thank you, Nissan, good move on that. And it's by and large pretty good. It's smooth enough that it's in the background doing its job, and when you lay into it, it picks the gear and it goes, and that's really all that really matters here. Um, it's paired with an all-wheel drive system that we did not get off-road. There's not enough ground clearance in this really to get up our hill test to see if it's any good at that. But we did drive it in the rain one day and it was great at sorting the power and pushing around where it needed to go. It's clearly a front-wheel drive based system that will send power up back when it needs it. And if you've ever driven anything like that, you know exactly what this is. Now, some data. We did get to test this 0-60. It ran 0-60 in 7.84, which is right on par for what this should be and it does have the ability to tow. Okay, let's talk about the ride. We've had some owners of the new Pathfinder comment to us and ask us how we think this thing rides because they have thought that it rides rough, the one that they own. On day one, I did not agree with them. On day two, I kind of see where they're coming from. 
and that's mostly driven by the very soft dampers. They're so soft that once you hit a bigger bump, you're relying on the springs to do all the work. So what that means is over, you know, reasonably paved roads, it's very, very plush, very cushy. But once you get into a severe pothole, you feel it, it becomes crashy. Now, I do also want to admit that I think the 20 inch wheels are the biggest culprit of the problem here. If you had one with 18s, you probably would not feel the same way. And guess what? That's the case with a ton of cars in this segment. Nissan's not alone on that. All that being said, this is a very well sorted package. We like the way it rode and drove overall. Um, while it is a three-door crossover, it's not going to drive like a Z. It's not inspiring. It does not offend those in the car, and you do not split your coffee, and that's the main objective here. Nissan understood the assignment. Now, all that covered, let's pull Craig back in and wrap this thing up. All right, Brian, it's time to wrap this puppy up. We've, we've driven it. We've talked about the exteriors, mm -hmm. about the interior. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Yep. All that good stuff. We'll talk about some of its and, things. And for our regular viewers, we're skipping the hill test for obvious reasons yep. and the shop segment for obvious reasons because yep. we're on site today. So. But you get the beautiful Texas Motor Speedway in the back. Exactly. Now, so you get some track shots too. But it's time to get into hipster score. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? No. Three, two, one, five. five. Wow, you really? finally figured wow. this out. You have figured this out. I'm so proud of you. I decided that 30 seconds ago. Uh, well, me too. Do so, you know why? Go ahead. Because it's not offensive to anyone. It's not brilliant in the eco hyper, or not hyper, hipster world to anyone either. It's right in the middle. You took the word right out of my mouth. No so. plaid, no hybrid, but not particularly inefficient. Does yeah. mean people, has a great purpose, right? I will say they are coming out with a Rocky Creek edition. Pretty cool. And it does actually have a little bit more off-road performance chops to it. More approach angle. Their tire. A that would get a little bit higher hipster score. We'll review that at some point. We'll stay tuned for that. Probably in a few months. Stay tuned for that. It's time to dig in the competition and who this car's for. You really want to talk about that. I so do. Let's look at this then. Because there's a lot. This is a big segment. Big segment. And we've driven, I think, all of them now or most of them by now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not the infinity of this. We haven't driven the infinity of this. Yeah, but that's a luxury. It's not the same. That's true. So your non premium label three row family hauler. Crossover. Crossover. Right. Not SUV, so not Expedition, not Suburban Tahoe stuff. Right. Not full frame. Right. But also. Not minivan. Right. Okay. So we've got the Pilot. Yes. We've got the Palisade and Telluride. Mm -hmm. You've got the Explorer. Mm -hmm. You've got the Durango, mm -hmm. which is kind of almost SUV. Mm -hmm. You've got this. CX-9. CX-9 and Highlander. And Highlander, yep. We've driven all of those, Craig. Yes. This one's $51,000. In platinum. In platinum top trim. Keep yes. that in mind. Yeah. This is maxed out. Yeah. But they all max out about 50. They're all about 50, so that's right where it should be. Yeah. And it's stiff competition. It is. This is better than a lot of them. This is way better than the previous generation. Oh, man. Give Light it, years. First of all, it looks and feels brand new, and it is. Yes. And the transmission just totally saves it for me. Yes. Now, compare this to something like an Explorer. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Explorer is a little bit more capable in the SUV world because it's real drive based. True. Yeah. The Durango kind of plays that game, too. Mm -hmm. Um, but like the two, three, four ringer that would be comparable to this motor is kind of a racket. And this sounds great. This sounds way better. Right? Than yeah. Tie it all together. The Palisade Telly rides are really compelling because they're kind of like overall balanced really well. Those twins are hard to beat. They're hard to beat. Yeah. But they're going to sell a bunch of these and I think that they're going to, it's going to be a leading segment for Nissan. And I'm not surprised by that. For me, I would be a little reluctant with the twenties. Yeah. Because of the ride situation. This is, uh, to me, this is the alt pick to the Highlander. If you don't want to just, oh, yeah. you want to avoid the whole Toyota thing because it's for whatever, for everyone. for whatever like reason, because you're tired, yeah. too many of your neighbors have it, right. but you want something just as good and comparable. And you want it to look sharp. This looks amazing. This, this looks better than that and yeah. is a, the alt pick to that. And we've had the Highlander recently. This feels fresh compared to the Highlander. Look, if you're in the minivan carpool pickup lane at school, yeah. not everybody's got a Pathfinder. This looks better than most of the things in that lane. And that's where we should leave it. Yeah, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more stuff. We're going to have a bunch of crap coming out of this automotive event. It's going to be awesome. And we will see you on the next one. And check us out on Patreon. Oh, that's right. We have Patreon too. All right. Thanks. Take see care. you. <laughs>